Hello, uh, in the last lecture, we have already seen the modeling of induction machine in stationary reference frame. We will just recapitulate what we have done in the last lecture. Model of induction machine in stationary reference frame. Now, we can write down the equation for the stator and the equation for the rotor and then we can develop the torque equation and from the torque equation we can find out the speed. So, this goes in in an iterative process. So, let us write down the equation for the stator. So, this is V d s is equal to R s i d s plus P s i d s. The stator is stationary, hence the stator does not have any rotationally induced CMF. And we can express the flux linkage. This psi d s is the flux linkage in the d axis stator. So, we can express that in terms of inductance and current. So, that is equal to R s i d s plus L s P i d s plus L m P i d r prime, i d r prime is the current referred from the primary side. And similarly, we can have V q s, V q s is equal to R s i q s plus P psi q s and that is equal to R s i q s plus L s P i q s plus L m P i q r prime. So, these are the two equations for the stator. Now, we need not simulate the zero sequence equation, because the zero sequence equation does not take part in torque production. So, for the calculation of the machine torque, it is sufficient only to write down the equation for the d and q axis and find out the corresponding currents and evaluate the torque. Similarly, for the rotor, we can write down the equation for the rotor here V d r prime R r prime I d r prime plus P s I d r prime and the rotor will have a rotationally induced TMF and the rotationally induced TMF will be a function of the speed of the rotor. So, that is plus omega r psi q r and we can again express this in terms of current only i d r plus l r p i d r plus l m p i d s plus omega r into L r i q r plus L m i q s. Similarly, we can write down the q axis voltage V q r prime equal to R r prime i q r prime plus P s i q r prime minus of omega r psi d r prime, this we can express in terms of the currents only R r prime i q r prime plus L r prime P i q r prime plus L m P i q s minus of omega r L r i d r plus L m i d s. Now, these four equations when we solve, these are four simultaneous differential equations. Now, we can solve this numerically, we cannot have any analytical solution, because the voltages are sinusoidal, but sometimes the machine is also fed from an inverter. When the machine is fed from an inverter, the voltages are not sinusoidal and furthermore, they can be any function of time. 
So, a closed form solution of these equations is not possible. So, we have to take the help of numerical methods. One of the popular ways to simulate this uh, differential equation is the Runge Kutta fourth order integration technique. So, we can use Runge Kutta fourth order integration technique to find out the values of i d s, i q s, i d r, and i q r, and these values will be useful for the torque calculation. Now, this uh, equation those that we have written here, we can express them in the form of a matrix. So, we can just write down these equations in the form of a matrix V d s, V q s, V d r and V q r. And here we have the impedance matrix and then we have i d s, i q s, i d r and i q r. Now, this impedance matrix is a 4 by 4 matrix and we can fill up this matrix from the previous equations. We can also fill up by inspection. We do not have to remember the various elements here. By intuition, we can fill up each and every element of this matrix. Let us see. So, we can we have four rows here and four columns. Now, this is R s plus L s p and this one is L m p and the stator does not have any rotational induced PMF. So, we can make this equal to 0, but the q axis stator this is R s plus L s p and this is L m p. Again, we have this element 0 because in, in the stator we do not have any rotationally induced TMF. In the rotor we will have the resistance drop, the rotor self inductance and then we have the coupling from the stator side and these two are the feed induced TMF term. So, we have omega r here and omega r and this will be coupled to i q r. So, we have L r prime in this case and this is L m from the stator side and for the fourth row that is for v q r, we have r r prime plus L r prime p, then we have coupling from the stator side, then we have the rotational induced TMF minus omega r L m and minus omega r L r prime. Now, this equation is a key equation for solving the differential equation of induction machine and this we can also represent in a symbolic form. So, if you represent this in a symbolic form, we have the following equation. So, V is equal to an R matrix and I plus L is the inductance matrix P i plus omega r a g matrix and then we have i. So, this matrix equation can be written in the following form. Here, v is a vector, v is corresponding to this vector, i is corresponding to this vector, r is the resistance matrix which is a diagonal matrix having the elements r s r s for the stator and r r prime and r r prime for the rotor and this l p is the matrix associated with the derivative of the current. So, this matrix can be easily evaluated. Those elements which have got derivative terms, they are clubbed into L matrix and those elements which has got the speed term is clubbed in the G matrix as you have already seen in a Kronz primitive machine model and this G matrix can be easily identified. So, we can write down what is the G matrix here because this G matrix is useful in calculating the torque of the machine. So, 
from this 4 by 4 matrix, we can see that we have got this element is, is having omega r term, this element is also having omega r term, this having omega r term and this is having omega r term. So, this G matrix will have 4 elements. So, we can write down this G matrix. And once we evaluate this G matrix, we can find out the torque. Torque is equal to P by 2 I transpose G and I. Now, we know that we have a three phase machine and the DQ model is a hypothetical model. It uh, does not really exist. We are simulating a three phase machine by means of a two axis model. So, when we are finding out the torque, we should be careful that we should get the torque back to the three phase machine torque. And we have already seen that the transformation that we have used, the transformation for the stator and the transformation for the rotor has got per phase power invariance. So, if we have two phase machine, the power of the two phase machine is 3 by 2 times of, I mean if you have a three phase machine, the total power is 3 by 2 times the power of the two phase machine because the power phase power is invariant here. So, if you take a two phase machine, you just have two phases. If you take a three phase machine, you have three phases. So, if you, if you convert the power of the two phase machine into the three phase machine, you have to multiply by a factor of 3 by 2. So, here we have to multiply in this case a factor of 3 by 2, because our model is a two phase model or, or a two axis model, actual machine is a three phase machine. So, if you want to convert it back into the torque of a three phase machine, you have to multiply 3 by 2 in this case. So, the torque in this case is 3 by 2 into P by 2 is the pole pair I transpose G into I. So, we can simplify this and if you simplify this, we can pre multiply and post multiply. Let me just write down the final expression. The torque is given in the following form 3 by 2 into P by 2 into L m I d r prime I q s minus I q r prime I d s. So, it means if we know the various currents, we can evaluate the torque of the machine. So, uh, how do you simulate this equation? Now, this equation can be simulated in the following fashion. Now, we can we can evaluate what is this L p. L p i is given as V minus of R i minus minus of omega r g i. If you see this, we are just trying to rearrange this equation. So, we are taking this term to the left hand side and trying to evaluate what is L p i. So, L p i is given as V minus r i minus omega r g i. Now, ultimately what we need is, is the current. So, if you want to find out the current, we should know the derivative of the current. So, P i is equal to L inverse of V minus r i minus omega r g i. This is what we have and this can be solved using runge kutta fourth order integration technique. So, we solve this by So, we can use runge kutta fourth order integration technique to solve this equation and once we solve it, we can find out the values of the various currents and from the currents, we can find out the torque and for the torque, we can also find out the speed. Usually, when we simulate 
a machine, the electrical variables vary at much faster rate than mechanical variables. And hence, in this particular case, the currents I d s, I q s, I d r and I q r vary at much faster rate than the speed. Speed is a mechanical variable. So, we can take this advantage of this particular property and we can simulate the current equation separately and the speed equation separately. What we are trying to do here is this that the four equation that we have, this is this is basically four equations we have I d s, I q s, I d r and I q r. We can solve them simultaneously by using Runge Kutta fourth order technique. And then when we come to the speed equation, we have the mechanical variable and that vary much slower than the electrical variable. So, while simulating the electrical variable, we can assume omega r to be constant. And after we obtain the torque, we can simulate this equation by linear integration technique and first order is sufficient. We can just have first order linear integration, which will be much accurate to give us the value of speed. So, we can we can find out the speed from this equation. And we know the torque and the speed. So, once we know the torque and the speed, we can plot the torque speed characteristic of an induction machine. Now, you will be surprised to see that the torque speed characteristic that we obtain of an actual machine is much different than what we have studied in the previous courses in electric machines. In the previous courses in electric machine, if you if you see that if you plot the torque speed characteristic of an induction machine T e versus omega r, you will see a curve like this. So, this is a synchronous speed and this is your torque axis and this is the speed axis. Here, the speed is equal to 0 and this is the nature of the torque speed characteristic and this has been obtained by assuming steady state equivalent circuit. The equivalent circuit, which you have already studied in your previous courses in electric machines, especially in the undergraduate second year level, gives the torque speed characteristic of a steady state machine. The machine is in the steady state condition, but here when we are simulating the machine, the machine is actually the actual machine. It is basically proceeding from the transient condition to the steady state condition. So, if you take t equal to 0 your starting time for the simulation and take some delta t for the simulation and you have a finish time t f and we can simulate this equation. The response that we obtain is the following. Now, we would like to call this to be a steady state torque speed characteristic. Now, if you have an exact simulation starting from rest, the torque speed characteristic will be something different. We can first plot torque versus time. We can plot speed versus time. We will see that the torque is not a smooth variable, it is basically a function of time. It oscillates like this and finally, if you have no load condition, it settles down to T e equal to 0. If you assume that T l equal to 0, as if the machine is being started from the stalled condition without any load, it accelerates and reaches the synchronous speed or close to the synchronous speed, it is called free acceleration. So, when we simulate the machine under free acceleration condition, there will be torque oscillations initially, then finally, it settles down to the final speed, where the torque is equal to 0 in the steady state it operates under no load condition. What about the speed? The speed gradually increases and finally, reaches the steady state value here. And if we plot the torque speed characteristic under free acceleration condition, it is something like this. So, in this case, we have we have exactly the plot that is available 
as the machine is starting from rest to, to the full speed. Now, this is because of the fact that the machine is being simulated through the transient condition. And when we energize an induction machine, in addition to the AC component of the current, there is a DC component of the current and the DC component produces a DC flux and the DC flux interacts with the rotating flux to produce a pulsating torque. So, that is the reason why we have torque pulsation as the machine starts from rest. So, this can be verified when we simulate the machine in the DQ equivalent circuit in the DQ model taking into account the transient condition and reaching the steady state finally. So, this is an interesting thing which can be seen in the simulation. Okay. Now, uh, with this before we proceed further, we would like to introduce a concept of reference frame. Reference frame is extremely important, because when we analyze the machine, we take a reference frame as per our requirement. It can be a stationary reference frame, which is stationary in the space. It can be a rotating reference frame, which is rotating in the space. And this reference frame has not chosen arbitrarily, they are basically chosen depending upon the need of a special control theory or need of machine simulation. So, we would discuss in this case reference frame theory. So, what we have here is the following, we have a set of A B C system. This is phase A, phase B and phase C and we would like to transform this into a DQ system. But the DQ system need not be always stationary, this may be rotating at certain speed, any arbitrary speed omega. So, we can we can say that when we convert this into a DQ system, DQ system is always orthogonal, this is my D axis and this is the Q axis and this angle that is subtends with the A axis is theta and the reference frame is rotating at the speed of omega radian per second. So, this reference frame is not stationary, is rotating at the speed of radian omega radian per second and this is called a rotating reference frame. Now, when we transform the variables from A B C into D Q, we get the following equation. Now, we, we have F D, F Q and F O. These are the variables that we have in the D Q reference frame. F O is the zero sequence component, which can be present in general, when we have an unbalanced system, that could be a zero sequence component. Now, this F D, F Q and F O can be obtained from F A, F B, F C. So, we have a transformation here. So, we can, we can use a transformation in this case. And this transformation will give us F D, F Q and F O from F A, F B, F C. Now, what is, what are this F A, F B, F C? They could be voltage, they could be current, they could be flux linkages for a electric machine. So, we can say that F can be voltage can be current or flux linkage. Now, when we transform this A B C into D Q, we will take the help of this transformation and the transformation can be easily found out. What we can do here, we can project this A onto D axis project this B onto D axis, project the C onto D axis and calculate what is the equivalent F D. Now, if we do this simple exercise, we will get the following result. We have cos theta, cos theta 1, cos theta 2 minus of sin theta, minus of sin theta 1, minus of sin theta 2 half, half and half. So, we have a multiplication constant here that is 
2 by 3. Now, this 2 by 3 is multiplied in this case to keep the power fetch power invariant. When we are transforming the ABC system into DQ system, we have to be careful that this uh, does not alter the system parameter, neither it alters the various variables of the original system. Say, for example, if I have a 400 volt three phase system, the power phase voltage is 230 volt. Now, if I transform this into a DQ system, the power phase voltage would also be 230 volt. Otherwise, you know that would be a discrepancy and extra work has to be done to calculate this transformation. Similarly, if, if we have a three phase system, the three phase current, power phase current is 10 ampere in the two phase system or in the DQ system, the power phase current should be also 10 ampere. So, we have to take such a transformation, which does not change the power phase power. So, this is based on power phase power invariance and that is why we multiply in this case 2 by 3. So, that power phase of the two phase system or D q system is same as power phase of the three phase system that is ABC system. The parameters are same, the variables are also same. So, when converting from three phase to two phase, we do not have to change the variables or change the parameters. So, uh, in this case, you can see that this omega r can have various values and accordingly, we have so many systems. So, if omega r equal to 0, we call this to be a stationary reference frame. This is also known as Stanley reference frame, by the name of a scientist called Stanley. Okay. So, this can be employed in case of an induction machine as we have seen little earlier that the induction machine was simulated in stationary reference frame, when the speed of the reference frame was 0, it was stationary in the space. Now, if we take omega equal to omega r, the speed of the reference frame is same as the rotor speed and we call this to be a rotor reference frame. And this actually will be useful when we model a synchronous machine, the reference frame is housed on the rotor and hence we have certain advantage in case of an induction machine and this is also called park reference frame. So, we, we also call this as park reference frame. Now, when omega equal to omega e, omega is a synchronous speed, we call the reference frame to be synchronously rotating reference frame or synchronous reference frame. So, when omega equal to omega e, we call this to be synchronously rotating reference frame or in brief, we can call this to be a synchronous reference frame. And if omega is arbitrary, if omega is arbitrary, we call this reference frame to be an arbitrarily rotating reference frame or arbitrary reference frame. If omega is arbitrary, we call this to be a arbitrarily rotating reference frame. So, we can recalculate this matrix. This is our transformation matrix, we can call this to be K s or C s. Now, this matrix K s is a function of theta. Now, this theta 1 here is theta minus 2 pi by 3, theta 2 in this case is theta plus 2 pi by 3. So, it is basically phase shifted by 2 pi by 3 and phase shifted by 4 pi by 3 respectively. So, uh, we know this cos theta, cos theta minus 2 pi by 3, cos theta plus 2 pi by 3. Similarly, we have the sin and the third is corresponding to, to the zero sequence component. 
So, we can always evaluate this transformation matrix and depending upon the speed, if the speed is equal to 0, theta is the integration of the speed. Basically, this is the angle that it subtends the d axis subtends with phase a. Now, if omega equal to 0, theta is equal to 0 uh, and that is equal to theta r if omega equal to omega r and that is equal to theta e if omega equal to omega e. So, uh, theta is the integration of the speed depending upon the speed the theta is defined. If the speed is the rotor speed, theta is the rotor angle with respect to phase A of the stationary axis. If uh, omega is the synchronous speed, theta is theta E, which is the synchronous reference frame angle or the angle of the synchronously rotating flux vector. So, uh, we can substitute the corresponding theta here depending upon whether it is a stationary frame or the rotor frame or synchronous rotating reference frame and we can evaluate this transformation matrix that is K s and when we have the transformation matrix, we can transform the A B C variable into D Q O variable. Okay. So, uh, this is what we wanted to discuss here and uh, if you want to take the reverse transformation, we can also do that. It means, if you want to calculate F A, F B, F C from F D, F Q and F O, we have to take the inverse of the matrix and in this case, the inverse of this matrix is the following. It is cos theta, cos theta 1, cos theta 2, minus sin theta, minus sin theta 1, minus sin theta 2, 1, 1 and 1. This is the inverse of K s, it is a invertible matrix. So, if you invert this matrix, we get K s inverse and K s inverse is given as cos theta, cos theta 1, cos theta 2 in the first column. Second column is minus sin theta, minus sin theta 1, minus sin theta 2 and 1, 1, 1. We can verify that if we multiply uh, K and K s inverse, we get I matrix or the identity matrix that can be verified. Okay. So, uh, with this uh, background, we can just see if we simulate an induction machine in arbitrarily rotating reference frame, what would be the machine model. So, we can we can do that induction machine model in arbitrary reference frame. So, what we have here is the following, we have the rotor, we have the stator, and then we have the rotor windings. This is A s, B s, C s, A r, B r and C r. And this rotating at the speed of omega r and we have taken a reference frame which is rotating arbitrarily. It means, this reference frame is having d and q axis, this is the d axis and this is the q axis and the speed of the reference frame is some arbitrary speed that is omega radian per second. So, uh, if we model an induction machine in arbitrary reference frame, the stator variables will also have speed induced CMF. It means, the actual machine is stationary, we have got A s, B s and C s, but the hypothetical or the 
virtual machine is rotating. It means, this is my D s and this is the Q s winding as per the cron primitive machine model. We have a two axis model in this case, but the axis are rotating at a speed of omega radian per second. And since the axis are rotating, the actual stator winding is stationary, but the d q windings are rotating in the space. And because of the rotation of the stator winding, there will be a rotationally induced TMF even in the stator, which is not usually present. And the rotationally induced TMF will be at a speed of omega, omega is the speed of the reference frame. So, uh, we can write down the equation of the stator that V d s is equal to R s i d s plus P s i d s and that is not enough. In this case, the stator is rotating at a speed of omega. This winding d s is not stationary, it is, it is in the rotating reference frame and the speed of the reference frame is omega. So, we have to have in this case a rotational induced TMF that is omega into psi q s. In a similar fashion, we can write down for the q axis v q s that is equal to r s i q s plus p psi q s plus omega into psi d s. And in the rotor, we will have the difference of the rotating reference frame speed and the rotor speed, because the rotor is also rotating at a speed of omega r the reference frame is rotating at a speed of omega, the differential speed in this case is omega minus omega r and the rotational induced TMF will be appearing at a differential speed that is equal to omega minus omega r. So, uh, we can just write down the rotor equation V d r equal to r r i d r plus p psi d r minus of omega minus omega r psi q r. These, these are all referred from the primary side and hence we have the primed variable v q r is equal to r r i q r plus p psi q r plus omega minus omega r into psi d r. So, these are the four equations of the induction machine in arbitrary reference frame, where we have the rotational induced TMF appearing both in the stator and also in the rotor. So, we will now just write down the equivalent circuit of an induction machine in arbitrary reference frame. The equivalent circuit will be a d q equivalent circuit, because we have the d axis stator and we have the d axis rotor here d r and we have the q axis stator and also we have the q axis rotor and the reference frame is rotating at a speed of omega as we have said before. And if we draw the equivalent circuit, we have to draw the d q equivalent circuit in this case and the equivalent circuit will be of this form. So, we have this is the d axis circuit. So, what we have in this case is here we have V d s R s and this is our magnetizing inductance L m and this is the stator leakage inductance, this is the rotor leakage inductance, this is the rotor resistance seen from the primary side and we have the voltage source here and that represents the rotationally induced TMF in the stator. In the rotor also will have a rotationally induced TMF. So, in this case also we have a rotationally induced TMF in this case. So, we have the rotationally induced TMF in this case and then we have a resistance in the rotor. So, this is the rotor resistance and this is the stator current I d s and this rotationally induced TMF we can see here it is omega into psi q s in the d axis and it is helping the applied voltage. So, we can see if this is the applied voltage with plus and minus, this is minus and plus here and this is omega into psi q s. And this uh, rotational induced TMF in the rotor 
will be appearing as omega minus omega r into psi q r and this sign we can also find out. So, this current is I d r entering this kind of thing, entering the rotor circuit like this and this will be minus here and plus here and this is also helping the rotor applied voltage. Now, in case of an induction machine, the rotor is short circuited. So, we can say that V d r prime is equal to 0, the rotor is short circuited and hence V d r prime is equal to 0. So, we have sorted the rotor in this case. Similarly, for the q axis, we can write down the equivalent circuit. This is the q axis equivalent circuit, inductances are same for d and q axis, because we have a cylindrical structure. In an induction machine, the rotor is cylindrical, the stator is also cylindrical, the air gap is uniform and hence the inductance of the d and q axis are the same. So, we can say here that we have the same R s in this case, we have the same L s, we have same L r and we have the same R r here and the sign of the rotational induced PMF will be different here that is omega into psi d s and here we have V q s, the q axis applied voltage and this is I q s, the q axis current and this current is I q r, the rotor current in the q axis and again V q r is equal to 0 and hence the rotor is short circuited. Now, what are the various flux linkages? Now, when we show here psi q s, this is the psi q s, the flux linkage in the q axis stator. The flux linkage in the q axis stator consists of the magnetizing flux and the stator leakage. This flux is the magnetizing flux associated with the rotor, I mean the, the magnetizing inductance of the q axis and the flux associated with the leakage inductance of the q axis is the q axis leakage flux. So, the magnetizing flux plus the leakage flux is the total flux linkage in the q axis. Similarly, in the d axis, this flux linkage is psi d s, the stator d axis flux linkage which consists of the magnetizing flux which is associated with the magnetizing inductance and the leakage flux which is associated with the leakage inductance of the d axis. So, this flux plus this flux is the total flux linkage in the d axis stator. Similarly, we can have the rotor d axis flux linkage is psi d r prime referred from the primary side and then this is psi q r prime the flux linkage in the rotor q axis referred from the primary side. So, this is the equivalent circuit of an induction machine in arbitrary reference frame and if we take this equivalent circuit, we can simulate the machine both in the transient condition also in the steady state condition without any loss of accuracy. And we can get back the original current I A, I B and I C when we transform I D S, I Q S and I O S by means of the transformation matrix into I A, I B and I C. So, uh, this finishes the modeling on induction machine. We have seen that the induction machine modeling is very interesting and we have seen how the generalized theory of electric machine can be applied to simulate an induction machine in two axis model. And there is an advantage which I have already seen that the two axis model is simulated with less computational effort compared to a three phase ABC model. And ABC model is much more complex compared to the two axis model and hence in many simulation method we go for the, the two axis modeling of induction machine. Induction machine is called the workhorse of industry, about 60 to 70 percent of the motors are induction motors in industry. However, for very large power application, we go for synchronous motors, especially for application which are 
more than 1 megawatt or so, synchronous machines are preferred because of their design economy. So, we will be discussing here the modeling of a three phase synchronous machine. Synchronous made modeling is more complex than induction machine, because it is a doubly excited system. We have three phase stator and we also have a field winding in the rotor. So, if we see the structure of a synchronous machine, these are the stator windings A s B s and C s and we have the rotor here and the rotor need not be a cylindrical rotor. Here we can also have a salient pole rotor. So, we represent the rotor by means of a salient pole structure. So, this is our rotor here. And the rotor has got the natural d axis. So, we can call this to be the d axis and perpendicular to this axis is the q axis. So, in the rotor we have windings on the rotor, the rotor has got the field winding and also the damper winding. So, the field windings are here. And this is excited by a DC voltage source V f and we also have the damper windings in the rotor, they are present in the d axis and q axis respectively. So, we have the d axis damper winding which is sorted by bars, copper bars and then we have the q axis damper windings which are also sorted and they function like induction motor winding. So, we have the field winding is called f and the damper winding in the d axis is called k d, k stands for damper winding and the damper winding in the q axis is called k q. So, we have little complex situation. So, instead of a cylindrical rotor, we have salient pole rotor and the rotor has got d c windings as well as windings like induction motors and they are called damper windings. So, when we simulate this machine, we take the help of rotor reference frame. So, what we will do here, we will choose the rotor reference frame for simulation and this is also called park reference frame after the name of a scientist called park. Now, this reference frame is attached with the rotor. This is the rotor here. The rotor is rotating at a speed of omega r radian per second and we assume that the phase sequence is A B C is, is rotating from phase A to phase B to phase C and the angle between phase A and the d axis is called the rotor angle that is theta r. Now, if you take the rotor reference frame, we have certain advantage. The advantages are as follows. When you take the rotor reference frame, the inductance matrix or the inductances of the synchronous machine which are space dependent becomes constant inductances, because in the d axis, this is the d axis, the air gap is constant, air gap is always constant in the d axis. Similarly, in the q axis, air gap is also constant, because the stator is cylindrical, rotor is salient pole rotor, but the d axis and the q axis have well defined inductances and we popularly say them as L d and L q or X d and X q for the reactances in the d axis and the q axis respectively. So, if you take the rotor reference frame, there is a natural advantage of having constant inductance in the d and q axis respectively. So, uh, in this case, the speed of the reference frame is the rotor reference frame and if we write down the equation in the rotor reference frame, we can say that 
V D S is equal to R S I D S plus P psi D S minus omega R psi Q S, V Q S is equal to R S I Q S plus P psi Q S plus omega R into psi D S. Now, what we are saying here is that we can have hypothetical winding here, when we transform this A B C into D Q system, we are basically talking about a D axis winding here and a Q axis winding here. Okay. So, the A B C windings are transformed into D S and Q S, which are rotating in the space with the speed of the rotor. And when we find out the voltage of V D S and V Q S, they are given by these two equations respectively. So, this is the V D S applied voltage in the D axis stator and this is I D S. Similarly, for the Q axis we can have the voltage and this is the current I Q S. So, uh, the A B C are transformed into V D S and V Q S in the stator. Now, what about the rotor? rotor is already in the two axis model. You can see that the rotor is we have definite d axis and definite q axis and in the d axis we have the field winding and the damper winding and in the q axis we have only the damper winding. So, we can write down the equation directly for the field V f is, is the field voltage that is equal to R f I f plus P psi f. The rotor does not have any rotational induced CMF because the reference frame is attached with the rotor. So, with respect to the rotor, the reference frame is not moving. So, the relative velocity between the reference frame and the rotor is 0, because we have chosen rotor reference frame. And hence, the rotor does not have any rotational induced EMF, because the relative velocity is 0. Similarly, the damper winding K d is equal to R k d I k d plus P psi k d, no rotational induced EMF, V k q is equal to R k q I k q plus P psi k q, no rotational induced EMF. So, we have five equations. Now, if you compare this with a with the equation of induction machine, in induction machine we just had four equations, V d s, V q s, V d r and V q r. So, naturally the simulation of synchronous machine is little more complex than that of an induction machine. Now, let us try to see what exactly is the transformation here. Now, if you choose in this case theta is equal to theta r, this is the transformation angle, because in this case the reference frame here is attached with the d axis. Now, this is the reference frame angle and we have assumed that omega equal to omega r, which means theta, the angle of the reference frame with respect to phase A of the stator is equal to theta r. So, if we substitute that here and write down our K s matrix, the matrix for transformation that is also equal to C s matrix, we can say it is 2 by 3 of cos theta r, cos theta r 1 cos theta r 2 minus of sin theta r minus sin theta r 1 minus sin theta r 2 half half and half. So, this is the transformation matrix which will transform the A B C variable of the stator into D Q variable which is in the rotor reference frame. And we can also write down the flux linkages psi A B C S is the flux linkage in the individual phase A, phase B, phase C. Now, when we simulate the machine in the D Q reference frame, it is quite easy, because we know that the inductance matrix is constant. The inductance in the D axis and the Q axis, they do not involve theta r, but what about the original equations? If you simulate in the actual A B C model, we can just go back to the 
the way we do uh, did for induction machine, what we did is the following that we wrote down the equation V A s equal to R s I A s plus P psi A s. This is simulation from the first principle. And similarly, V B s is equal to R s I B s plus P psi B s. And similarly, we wrote down for the C phase R s I C s plus P psi C s. Now, we, we have three phases and three equations and we also have V f that is equal to R f I f plus P psi f, V k d is equal to R k d I k d plus P psi k d and V k q is equal to R k q I k q plus P psi k q. Now, this equation represent the equation of the actual synchronous machine in three phase A, B, C and this is little more involved because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 equations and we have to solve 6 differential equation which is more complex. Not only that, the flux linkage here psi A, A, psi B, A, psi C, S will involve the inductance matrix and the currents I A, I B and I C or I A, A, psi B, S and I C, S and the inductance matrix will be a function of theta r because of the saliency. So, we will see in the next lecture how we can transform this equations into d q equation in the rotor reference frame and as a result of that the inductance matrix which we will see in the next lecture which is a function of theta r will be independent of theta r and which is an advantage of simulating a synchronous machine in rotor reference frame.